Tsunami Studios. So, Scoob came to streaming on demand. You guys could watch it anywhere you want. You have to pay the full price of a movie, though, which is okay. And I will say this about Scoob. It is pretty entertaining. I mean, I had a good time watching it. It's far from the best movie of the year. It is far from being this great over-the-top performance or a great story that a lot of people are going to invest in. I think it's kind of fun. It was a great surprising little movie that came out and I'm excited it came to video on demand because I said it before here too, I don't think this movie could have held up in an actual theater. I don't think it would make that much money simply because is anybody really interested in a Blue Falcon and Dino Mutt spinoff? Does anybody really want to see that? Could Captain Caveman hold his own thing? I don't think so. So just those things alone, I was like, how is this movie going to perform? How is this movie going to do? And it was pretty fun. So we'll get into it a bit here. I'll say overall right now, it's pretty good. It's pretty entertaining. A lot of the things it does, I like and I support. There's some things that I'm kind of iffy on. So we'll jump into that right now. We'll say this. The story is not what you're expecting. If you're going into this movie thinking you are going to be seeing a classic Scooby-Doo series or just a movie, you're not getting that. This goes to some really weird places. I'm talking like the gates of hell, underworld, dark, foreboding, creepy, and just bizarre. Like some of the stuff that they're talking about and doing in this kids movie is so bizarre and shocking. And you're just like, who is this for? What kind of kid wants to see the, the skulls of the Cerberus, the dog that guards the gates of hell? Why is this what we're doing in a Scooby-Doo movie? For kids. I don't know. It just, that made no sense to me, and I don't know why it was in there. It's an interesting plot element, and I get it. Um, I think my favorite part of this movie is kind of the relationship between Shaggy and Scooby, because at the heart of anything with these characters, they are the two that people gravitate to the most, or the two that are the most liked and most intri intrigued by, and they were really good here. Will Forte's Shaggy is a little bit hit or miss. I will say that. It's kind of iffy at times, but he does, I think he holds up better than some of the other cast who just kind of blend into their role and you don't really think much of it. Like, it's far from my favorite voices for Fred, for Daphne, or for Velma, and for Shaggy, of course. But they do their part well, and it, it doesn't distract you from what you're watching. It just sometimes you just like don't think the voice fits so well. I noticed that a lot in Fred because it's Zac Efron, but it is what it is. I'm not going to complain about it. It did some interesting stuff there, which is kind of cool. And all the supporting cast, I think, was voiced way better. Like, Tracy Morgan as Captain Caveman is aspired casting. Like, I think that's brilliant, and it makes a lot of sense. Was it uh, Kiersey Clemens is uh, Dee Dee Psych or something? Uh, she did okay. I mean, she worked. Ken Jeong as Dino Mutt, I think, is really good, especially because Dino Mutt is, like, the only, like, properly smart character in this entire movie, which is kind of cool. And Mark Wahlberg as Blue Falcon. We have to talk about Blue Falcon for a sec here, just because I didn't know what to expect from this character. You saw the trailers. He was really stupid. He's got a new costume, and they explain it in the movie. He's not the original Blue Falcon. He is the son of the original Blue the son of the original Blue Falcon. His name is Brian. He's kind of, he's, I like his character a lot more in context for the movie than I did before. His character is kind of cowardly. He's kind of like, te not tech savvy in like the way if he's good with gadgets, but more like he has an online social media presence. He knows how to get around that stuff. His character works for what they needed it to do. He, like I said, he is not what I would have liked to have seen from Blue Falcon because I would like to take all these characters seriously, but I think for the most part it holds up and a lot of people will enjoy it. I was on board with it. For context of this movie alone, I was on board with it, but if we ever get a solo Blue Falcon and Dino Mutt, I don't know if I want to see a lot more of this. The character, I get it. He dabs, he's popular, and there's even jokes about it in the movie. It's like, a guy your age shouldn't be doing this or acting like this. And it's kind of funny for that regard. But other than that, it's okay. Mark Wahlberg, he does his best as the voice. But it really works better when it plays off Dino Mutt and Dee Dee because they're a little more serious and he's kind of, a little, you know, flamboyant and his like and energetic. He's got that kind of vibe to him, which it really works for that. And some of it is just kind of okay. 
I don't know. It's interesting. I don't think that it could hold up on its own movie, which kind of sucks, but we'll have to see what happens there. Because I don't think, and I hate to say it, I don't think we're going to be getting another one of any of this. I don't. And that's so sad to say. I hope we do. Because Dick Dastardly is the villain in this movie. He's voiced by Jason Isaacs. He does really well. I like Dick Dastardly a lot as the character. There's some beats we got with Muttley in here too, but he's not a big player. It's kind of actually like the main reason besides getting all these riches that Dick Dastardly wants to go in to kind of get to the underworld. It's it's weird. It's weird where this movie goes and it, you're just like, this is what you're doing for your first entry in a Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe. You're going to go here with these characters. That's kind of strange, but it works. It, it, it's not upsetting. So Dick Dastley is a highlight for me too. Like I said, Tracy Morgan, Captain Caveman, not a big role, but he did really good there too. And I guess kind of going back to the relationship of Scooby and Shaggy, it is a very compelling relationship between those two. I like at the beginning, we set up that Shaggy feels kind of alone and he hasn't really made friends. He doesn't know how to handle, you know, a mature conversation in that regards. And we see that a lot when he's really young. That is really cool to see and how, you know, when he meets the gang, how it kind of builds him up and he kind of, he feels better about himself because of it. Shaggy's got some great moments in this. I think more depth to that character than we've seen in a long time. He's not just the joke character. He makes sacrifices. He learns from his mistakes. It's very compelling stuff to see with him. We do not get a lot from like the Scooby gang. Like, yes, they're kind of separated for most of the movie. Shaggy and Scooby are off doing their own thing. And, you know, Fred, Daphne, Velma, they're off doing their own thing too, but they all come together in the end, which is kind of cool to see. Some of the best spots of this movie, though, are when the gang's all together. Like, they do a great sequence where you're doing, like, the old school theme song, and you see the the characters and the 3D model moving in the exact same way that they did in the original cartoon. That was really cool. Some of the way those ghosts look, too, were really cool. I liked all that stuff. But there wasn't a lot of mystery or kind of investigating going on, so if you guys are going into this expecting like um like a nancy drew kind of mystery for kids you're not getting that it's very much more like it's a superhero flick and i think that kind of hinders it because the mystery stuff was a lot more better than the superhero stuff again i don't know why you made this blue falcon the way he is because it's not that he's kind of an imbecile and i don't really want to see that from blue falcon i guess if we bring his father in in the other one that could be kind of interesting to see but we'll have to see where that goes a thing i really liked about this movie too was just the the sound effects the way it's got like the old school kind of slapstick sound effects when somebody falls or does something or bonks into something that was really cool and really interesting to hear especially if you are kind of like attuned to the kind of Hanna-Barbera old school stuff and you kind of know it and you respect it that makes it a little easier and more interesting if you already know what that is and like I'm somebody who knows what that is so it kind of helped me get there I didn't notice a huge amount of like small easter eggs and references to other Hanna-Barbera stuff and I'll tell you guys right now, we are going to be doing a geek wave talking about the Hanna-Barbera Cinematic Universe. I'm not sure if that'll be the next one or the one after the one I'm doing soon. We'll have to see what comes up of that. But references, I got a Peebles Pet Shop from Mella Gorilla. So that was kind of cool. I liked seeing that. And a Hex Girls poster showed up at one of the amusement parks. That was kind of cool to see too. And there was um, Messick Mountain, which I, I was trying to look up. Is that like a famous place that I can't remember? I think it's the name of one of the original voices or one of the original animators, something Messick. So that was cool to see that too. It's not a bad movie. I think it's just really interesting in the way it did certain things. And you wouldn't be expecting them from a Scooby-Doo show. It doesn't play off like one of those classic cartoons. It's very much modern. Here's your selfie reference, your Instagram, your Netflix reference. And for the most part, I get that. The voices, it's okay. The, Hanna -Bar the building up of the Hanna-Barbera universe, it did it pretty well. It didn't feel forced at all. Obviously, when you got like things going to certain places where certain characters have to be, you can tell it's forced, but if it works for the story, I'm not going to complain. It's not that bad of a movie. I think, I don't know who would enjoy it more, kids or adults. Like, I don't really know. Because do kids really, like, care about that kind of stuff? They're, I don't know. It, it, it's not a bad movie. I keep saying that, but it, it has some really good moments and a lot of interesting stuff that I think a lot of people can gravitate to. I was really excited for this. I was not let down. I got a few good chuckles out of it, and I think a lot of people are going to enjoy it as much as I did. 
and you can look forward to more Hanna-Barbera talk coming to this channel, especially when that HBO Max show was yellow jellystone drops. That's going to be exciting. So that's all I got to say on Scoop. I give it a thumbs up. Here or there, there's a few things you might not like. Maybe I don't think Blue Falcon's going to work for everyone, but Dino Mutt saves that relationship. That's all I'll say. So thank you guys so much for watching this review. I'll catch you guys in the next video. My subscribing, do that. I don't know why I said my subscribing, but do it. And, you know, Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, all that's in the description below. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. Stay safe. Have fun. Good luck.